Hello, I'm Natalie Graham and this is the Sunday Politics in the South East. Coming up later, we return to Rochester and Strood. Can Mark Reckless hold on to his much-reduced majority there at the general election? Well, I'll be putting that question and others to Mark, who won the Kent by-election for UKIP in November. We're also joined by his former close political ally, Craig McKinley. Used to belong to UKIP, Craig. Now he's standing for the Conservatives in South Thanet against Nigel Farage. And Nishaba Khan is here as well. Hello, she's standing for Labour against Mark in Rochester. <laughs> I do hope you're all keeping up. Thanks for joining us. So it lacked the drama of the last conference when Mark announced his defection, but UKIP activists are riding high after two days in Margate. The leader is comfortably ahead in the latest poll in the seat. He hopes to win South Thanet. In fact, Nigel Farage made bold predictions about his party's performance in Kent. There are flashing images in this clip. When I hear the experts telling us that uh, perhaps at the general election, you know, UKIP might win four or five seats in Parliament, well, let me tell you, we are serious challengers to win four or five seats in this county alone. Yeah. Now, I'll tell, you, uh, I'll tell you where I've been for the last six or seven weeks. I've been here in Thanet, working, working with an active local branch that is going to fight all 56 seats on Thanet District Council Craig McKinley, you were the one who complained Nigel wasn't spending enough time in the constituency. Apparently, as we've just heard, he's been knocking on doors. And look at the results. The latest surveillance poll that came out on Thursday puts him well in the lead and you in third place. Well, very strange poll. Uh, I always put it down to he who pays the piper. It was paid for by a UKIP donor. I uh, don't know very much about the, you know, the background source data that they were looking at, but we've looked through the uh, Salvation Poll, obviously, and there are some inherent, inherent uh, problems within well, it. Lord Ashcroft poll, which is a Tory Lord donor, came out with a very tight result, one percentage point between you. Did. But what, what that shows is that well, Nigel I mean, Farage knocking on doors, keeping different. a low profile away from the media, just as you asked him to do, has paid dividends for him. Well, it must be a very low profile, because I've heard of nobody who's actually met him. Uh, it must have been extremely low indeed. Uh, but it's that poll bears no resemblance to what we're finding on the doorstep, where we're finding that our pledge base is not really leaking away at all. So not really sure where they got that poll from. Okay. Well, we'll not but we'll, we'll wait days the future one, which, are, which may right have some more not. credibility. Mark Reckless, that poll was carried out February the 18th the 20th before the screening of that Meet the UKIPPERS programme, which showed Councillor Roseanne Duncan, mm. now expelled from your party, saying that she had a problem with people with Negroid features. I mean, you said in your speech at conference on Friday how important it is for your party to shake off xenophobia. But these people keep coming, don't they? Today in the Express, Bexhill and Battle candidate, UKIP candidate, has said he liked EDL, English Defence League, on Facebook. What do you do to get rid of these people? Well, I mean, UKIP is a party of all Britons, first and second generation Britons, as much as any other. And I think what's important for any political party is when someone does say something unacceptable when you see this sort of stuff, what do you do about it? And as soon as we heard about this woman in Thanet, we ensured she was expelled from the party. And I think what you are seeing is that people in, in Thanet are realising that Nigel Farage is not just leader of UKIP, but he's going to be the next member of but Parliament said, for that, South Thanet. that salvation poll, which gave him a strong lead, came out before that. There have been more recent polls since the programme. 44% of people believe UKIP is a racist party. YouGov found nearly half UKIP voters admit to being racially prejudiced. Mm -hmm. It's a perception problem, a real well, problem for your I mean, party. I mean, we're, we're, we're threatening to break up that cosy cartel of establishment parties who've basically had it their own way for far too long. And actually what you're seeing in fact... You have to be part of that for 15 years, Mark. And um, I didn't you know, feel... Local supporters supporting I didn't feel we were keeping our, our promises, Craig. We said we were going to cut immigration to less than 100,000. It's now even net basis. Over, it's now 300,000. That's more than the population of the Medway towns. And what you're seeing with Nigel is the more time he spends in South Thanet, people realise he's going to be okay. the next we're member of Parliament. We're getting away from the question He's going to be the powerful you, voice who's going to get South Thanet back on the map. I was asking you about the problem your party has with the kind of support, the kind of voters it's attracting. You tried to inject a positive note. Douglas Carswell, as, as we've just heard, said this weekend that Enoch Powell was wrong. You spoke about xenophobia. Nigel Farage is now saying your party needs to inject a positive note into the immigration debate. Are we seeing the signs now of you and Douglas Carswell, the two elected MPs, influencing your party's policies? Well, I think our voice is being heard, but I think actually where we are and where Nigel is in this is basically in the same place. And you we two need are persuading to... Nigel to take a more positive line. No, we, we agree that we've had immigration has been too high. We need to control it, have an Australian 
Einstein-style points-based system and admit people on the basis of skills, not just in order to reduce numbers, but actually so as to be fair to people from a Commonwealth background, and we're the only party with a non-discriminatory immigration policy that will apply that across okay. the board, an Australian-style points based system. Let's get back to... Let's about this, this programme last week. Uh, she was only expelled because she dared to say it to camera. Uh, when, you, when you spoke to the press officer locally, she was on camera on that programme, said, we keep telling Roseanne to keep her mouth shut. So she'd obviously said things like this before, but it was only because she dared to say it yeah. on camera and, and cause embarrassment the media that they don't finally have to try got hard rid of her. To find these people, I, do I, they, Mark? I, 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 saw, I saw that so lady's face, and she was, she was horrified by that, what was said. You could see from herself and her husband how they reacted. They were shocked and horrified by what was said. But she obviously said that it before. No, the party did nothing about it. It can have no place in UK. Mark, I come from an immigrant background. I come from a background of families that were from the Commonwealth countries that came to the United Kingdom in the 70s, and I have to say, watching that programme, I felt incredibly uncomfortable. You say that UKIP is a party for everybody. I honestly don't feel that. And I'm saying that to you as someone who comes from a migrant background. It's not just about me being a Labour Party candidate, but genuinely, when I hear some of the things that are said by UKIP candidates, that are said by elected representatives in UKIP, Shabba, I find it worrying. Why aren't you... We'll talk about your performance in Washington's Truth later in the programme. Why aren't you doing better? I mean, the, the Salvation poll that I mentioned that puts Craig in third place, puts Will Scobie, your candidate, in South Sanit in second place. Yes. He says only he can beat UKIP, but actually, the first time they've used the candidates' names, Labour's slipped significantly in the South Sanit polls. Is he the right candidate to take on Craig and Nigel? Absolutely. Will Scobie is doing a really good job down in Thanet. He's been working very, very hard for since he's been selected. Why is he doing better in the polls, then? Well, polls are always, as Craig picked up on, pro polls are always interesting to look at. One day they'll say one thing, the next day they'll say another. And I have to say that when people did watch that documentary, I think it did turn people off UKIP because for a long time now people have been saying, and Michael okay. Farage has been saying, and Mark has been saying that we're inclusive, we're a party for everyone. Well, it really didn't feel that way. Right, well, interesting, because one of your <coughs> Labour colleagues in Kent has recently announced that she's leaving Labour and supporting UKIP. Harriet Yeo is a former Deputy Chairman of the National Executive Council... For She's the former chairwoman of the National Executive Committee for Labour. She resigned from the party two weeks ago, and yesterday she spoke at the UKIP conference in Margate. This is quite refreshing for me because from the Labour Party, you know, you have to stay on message, on script. And I'm not bashing the MPs who work hard for the Labour Party, but, you know, you are not allowed to talk about a referendum. It is the thought police. UKIP is the people's movement. And although people say it's old establishment, it's not. It's refreshing. Nowhere else in politics do people listen. So, the Ioana Chubba, UKIP are attracting Labour voters. Mark will tell us that. The NHS policies announced this week are actually going further than Labour in terms of money <laughs> that, that UKIP are promising to the NHS. How do you respond to the UKIP threat as a Labour party? Well, firstly, just picking up on Harriet Yeo, I mean, it's interesting to see that she joined UKIP shortly after she was deselected. She's not joined, she's lending her support. Oh, sorry, she's lent her support. I mean, she's standing there talking very pro. So yes, I and that was on Friday, I should point out, um, yesterday. She's, um, but it was interesting that it happened after she was deselected as a Labour Party councillor and after she was deselected from her position. So it doesn't count, then? Well, no, I'm not saying it doesn't count, but what I'm saying is that her move has been interesting. So how do you respond? You've got a fight, Mark. You're hoping to increase your, your, well, your results, I'm sure, from the by-election. How do you, as a Labour Party, respond to the threat of UKIP in Well, Kent? we found... I mean, I found the threat of UKIP. I'm, no, I'm not going to say that the UKIP don't take Labour Party votes. Absolutely, they do. But when we peel away at the surface of what they're offering, it's very different to what, as a Labour Party... We are saying. Now, I know that UKIP this week pledged that they're going to be investing in the NHS, but actually, when we just scrape the surface of that, only a few weeks ago, Nigel Farage was saying how he see, saw an a insurance-based system was the best way and how they wanted yeah, it to he, be private. Well, his party's now, persuaded him to change his I mind. Feel... I just, <clears throat> sticking, sticking to Labour... I mean, it's interesting, Craig McKinley, any Labour voters in South Thanet who aren't attracted by UKIP aren't going to be attracted by you either. You're well, an ex-UKIP. Well, yeah, you should be left, called UKIP I, like. I know, but I you're not for a, a number of reasons. Swap, so you're not, you know, one, you're one not of which, going to attract One of which are the problems that we're seeing in, in, in all over the country amongst but UKIP But you were selected mm. because of your UKIP time, background, Craig. because you're seen as being well, to the right true. of your party and not a moderate, which arguably would be a better candidate to take votes from Will Scobie, well, who, let's remind you, is in second place in the latest Well, I, I don't believe that for one moment. <laughs> I mean, I, I left UKIP for a number of reasons. Uh, most of all was because 
in the South particularly, uh, there are more Conservative voters going to UKIP, and that's still the case. And this is why what should have been your spring conference 66 days before an election, there should have been some manifesto pledges. And all we've seen are populist buttons with absolutely nothing behind them. I mean, your education policy on your website has only runs to nine lines. You've spent the, um, you know, the savings on foreign aid budget and EU budget, I think, about ten times over now. It's changed almost on a weekly basis. First of all, you were talking about cutting the deficit with that money. Now okay, we've got, we're getting well, now into a lot of detail, well, now Mark. We, I mean, now we've got spending more on the NHS. <laughs> let's let's, let's, I mean, it, let's it, it finish this section of the programme with, with hearing well, from Mark. I mean, one. You've got to win, South End. If Nigel Farage loses to Craig or Will Scobie, then he's, a, he's a, days as leader of your party are over, aren't they? I mean, he's over, he's over ten points uh, ahead. He's going to be the powerful voice for... For, for South Thanet. And what we've been doing this week is we launched our NHS manifesto in, in Strood. And we can find £3 billion to spend on it because we're not going to be... European Union and closing well, our... Okay. There's a number of sources. We're He's not going to be spending... To ten, can I complete, please? Yes. We're not going to be spending 10 or £20 billion a year on the European Union. We're not going to be spending that £10 billion on overseas aid. We're not going to be giving billions what extra to Scotland. We're not quadrupling this? spending on the green things from 2.3 to £9.8 billion by 2020. And we're going to use that money on domestic priorities. First and foremost, the NHS. My father's a, a doctor. My mother was a, a Nurse. The NHS runs in my blood. We've now got 13 million more to rebuild our AE at Medway Hospital and working to get okay. GPs at that AE to help. Yeah, and the NHS gonna, are number I'm one. I'm going to stop you there, Mark, because we're about to talk about your campaign in Rochester and Excellent. Street. We've just been talking about South Thanet. What about that other key battleground for UKIP here in the South East? Mark's seat. Sarah, who reported from the constituency during the by election, has been back. Again, there are flashing images in this film. <laughs> First, the by-election. And now, just when he thought it was safe to go out, the general election. Yes, it's Rochester and Strood, the sequel. And we're here on location in the constituency with some of the candidates looking ahead to one of the most anticipated political battles in the South East. The insurgents UKIP may have won the by-election last November, but only just with a majority under 3,000. So how different will it be this time round, fighting a general election? We're going to get probably an extra 12, 15 percent uh, turnout in the coming election, and it'll be general election. So will people change their mind? But at the same time, uh, UKIP have been very, very strong in Rochester and Strood in the local elections and at the European elections as well. So will that vote hold up for them? Will Mark Reckless be able to build a personal vote? Will he be able to uh, come across as uh, somebody, a voice specifically for Rochester and Strood? Or will he be wiped away by a swing towards a Conservative Party that will end up electing Kelly Tolhurst? I think at the stage we just don't really know. The bookies are split on which way it'll go here in May, but this is where we left the drama three months ago. Previously in the by-election. UKIP were victorious, while Emily Thornberry's badly timed entrance capped off a campaign that saw Labour finish third. And who can forget the PM's five appearances in his throw the kitchen sink at its strategy, which failed. Conservative campaigners are undeterred, despite a leaked document from the Tory campaign HQ listing Rochester and Strood as a non target. It's a target seat for me, and uh, the support that I'm getting from the Conservative Party is, is, is still very good. I want to prove to the people of Rochester and Strood that actually it is the Conservatives that can best represent them, and I'm the best person to represent them. I understand the local people, I know the place, and I'm an individual who will roll my sleeves up and get stuck in. Campaigning's underway for all the parties. Labour once held this seat, but it's not a target this time. So are these other parties just bit part players in a UKIP Tory drama? I'm not here because I want to become an MP. I'm here because I want to get the message across that the government is an absolute disaster um, and we need to put pressure on them to respond to what people actually need. We really want to increase our vote back up to where we were before, about 7,000 votes is what we'd like to do. It's going to be very difficult this time, but uh, I think we, across Kent, we're actually going to make some progress. 
It's clear Rochester and Strood is still a key seat to watch. In the by-election, it was definitely about local issues. This was Mark Rex's campaign. He says, oh, well, I can't represent your issues because the Conservative Party holds me back. But when it comes down to a general election, are people going to say, well, I care more about David Cameron as Prime Minister? Right now it appears that people are more caring about David Cameron as Prime Minister and big national issues, but that could change again in the next few weeks. That's what makes this campaign and this general election so exciting. I think this is one of the most interesting constituencies in England, if not the whole of the UK. But I actually think it's a part of the new battlefront in British politics. The general election 2015, coming to a TV near you. Don't miss it. <laughs> We're not going to miss it. That was Sarah Neville reporting. We did ask Kelly Tolhurst to join us in the studio today, but she was unable to. Craig's taking her place on behalf of the Conservatives. Nishaba, as John Fitzgibbons just said, May is going to be very different. We're going to be choosing a Prime Minister this time. It's not a by-election. Ed Miliband is your biggest handicap, isn't he? Not at all. I completely disagree with you. When you look at the polls, Labour is still in the lead. Um, and actually, I remember when Ed came down to Rochester and Strood, he came out, we were talking to people on the doorstep, someone talked to him about the national minimum wage and talked to him about being on a zero-hour contract, and since then that's become a national debate. And that's what people want in a leader. You're talking about polls putting Labour in the lead. Takes... I'm, I'm not aware of many polls. As far as I can tell, they're all neck and neck between you, the Conservatives, nationally and locally. Um, we know Ed Miliband's a problem for you on the doorstep. There was, there was research in the Times yesterday showing a huge gap between people who believe in a Labour victory and people who believe Ed Miliband can be Prime Minister. We saw the damage that Emily Thornberry did to your party mm -hmm. on your doorstep. I mean, you, ha what have you learnt from the last campaign which is going to make you do things differently this time? I think, for me, the focus is... And this isn't really a change from the last campaign, but it's the fact that you've just got to go out there and speak to as many people as possible. Just as we were talking about Thanet, it's exactly the same. We did that last time, didn't you? We heard from Vince Street. Maple, who was working we did. seven days a week, we long did hours, very pounding hard. the doorstep. But and I yet think we actually have a very strong national message now as well. your performance was very weak. You got 16.8% of the vote. You used to hold that it seat. It was a very 30. different seat. It, it was wasn't. You held boundaries. three seats in Medway. We held the seat under different boundaries. You got, yes, but you got 11%. Eleven point seven percent less share of the vote than you did in two thousand and ten. But what actually, doing it's wrong? a by-election, so therefore, in a by-election, people will vote differently. It, it was painted as a two-horse race, and people will vote differently. They wanted to give the government a kicking, and that's what they did. Now, as you said, in a general election, people vote differently. They think differently, and I will be out there pounding on the door okay. and giving out a Labour message. And we'll um, find out how much of we'll a weakness your leader is yes. for your campaign. <laughs> Craig McKinley, if you'd stood in Rochester and Strood against. Mark in November, would you have won the seat? Apparently you wanted to do that and jump ship No, from I didn't South want to jump Thanet. ship. I'd already been adopted elsewhere. I know, apparently you asked if you could swap and take... No, I didn't take... ask that at all. I was, I, was, you didn't. I was adopted elsewhere. I, if I'd been in the candidate's pool and hadn't been adopted elsewhere, well, who knows what might have happened. Could you have won the seat instead of Kelly? Um, who knows? Who knows? I mean, I'm, I'm a councillor in a very strong uh, Conservative ward. But it's going to be very different. I mean, this is a binary choice. In May, it's do you want Ed Miliband, Ed Balls and Harriet Harman walking through the doors of number 10 or do you want <coughs> David Cameron Why? with a team that's actually delivered an economic improvement? And through the country. kitchen oh, sink on the at Russia Well, Street. I don't know what doorsteps you're Why is it knocking on. I've probably, probably, yeah. probably knocked on yeah. as many you're doors. You're not the same ones. Well, I knocked on probably <laughs> as many doors as these two during the Russia and Strew by-election and I heard... In Labour areas, people were giving the government a kicking, as you said. And I heard lots of Conservative voters saying, it's a by-election, not going to change the government, I'm going to do something different, but I'll be back this time. Why isn't Roger Strood a target seat for the Conservatives? Damien Green didn't seem to know when we asked him two weeks ago. Well, I think because it's a guaranteed win for the Conservatives. Simple as that. <laughs> OK, Mark, Simple you heard that. it. Uh, so you're, you're you are defending, as we've just heard, a smaller majority. People aren't as likely to vote on your local record this time. It is going to be about the big picture. And, uh, again, reports in the papers this weekend say that people in your party are really worried. They think they face a very, very tough fight. Well, we shouldn't forget that as recently as five years ago, this was a Labour seat, and I won it and from, from Labour. And I think what we saw in the by-election was we saw the Prime Minister rather desperate appealing to Labour people to come in behind the Conservative candidate to stop, to stop UKIP. And I, I don't think there's going to be much of that at the by-election. You've seen the negative campaigning we're seeing from Conservative and Labour and that sort of focus. I'm again, like at the by-election, going to be talking about the positive issues. Medway Hospital, I think by putting that front and centre of my campaign, we managed to get the £13 million to rebuild our A&E. And by the, the, the Lodge Hill issue, by putting that front and centre, 
I think we actually, rather than the Conservatives, just rubber stamping it, got it called again, into public mines, inquiry. Mines and I think focused. that's a big win. You don't need me really to tell you. That you got the 13 million for, for the hospital. I mean, yep. you're in cuckoo land. But right? you voted getting... in the health and social care bill, which has been so damaging to the NHS, Mark. How can you sit here and talk about your positive campaign on the National Health Service? Well, I have to say, the more I've looked at this, the, the more I think Labour were, were, were right on this. And I think right. protecting, protecting the NHS, stopping the privatisation and fragmentation, it was, was Labour who let Darren Valley have that PFI. Why? It was it, Labour who let so Medway. Why did you not look at it when you were voting for it? I believe what Minister said. And I think the evidence has shown that they're, they're wrong. Instead of actually putting the local people in charge, it's led to more privatisation on the NH NHS. I just think it hasn't worked. I do want to work with people across all parties to try and get our hospital back in, in Medway, to try and get the GPs working better in front of Medway, of Medway Hospital. I spoke about Lodge Hill getting that called into a public inquiry. I thought okay. that was a, a, hu a huge, a huge achievement. We heard, you were told, I think you were in the group meeting of the Conservatives. Spoken favourable and voted for. We when understand it was, it was all going to be rubber stamped because it was there at the by election. I, we've now got that public inquiry. I think we've got a real chance of getting that ruled out, not having 5,000 houses in the And where are the houses going to go? And I think I made a difference because of what I did, standing down, fighting a by-election. And okay. the one thing we have, immigration. We're the Conservatives have said to it's going to be the top there. issue. I, I they failed some, completely we're going to have to stop on immigration. Because it's time for a forget. round up of the other political <laughs> events you might have missed this week. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Here's James Fitzgerald. <laughs> After a seven-year legal battle, the New Haven public was told by the Supreme Court that the beach belongs to the port and is out of bounds. I'm devastated. I can't believe it. I was brought up on that beach. The Highways Agency has been chasing 130,000 drivers who've dodged paying at the new cashless Dartford crossing. Almost 20,000 are foreign. But tell us where you stand on health, on the education, on the economy. So that's why we... In the week their party launched its election campaign, the Greens in Brighton and Hove took their proposed 6% tax increase to council. But after six hours, the debate ended in stalemate and was adjourned. And some council housing tenants in Crawley felt a newsletter compared them to beer-swilling chavs. The council leaflet suggested setting aside cash for court fines and cigarettes with the Tories claiming... It fits into a wider narrative of the Labour Party patronising and taking its core supporters for granted. But the council said the budgeting tool came from the National Money Advice Trust. Mark Reckless, Nigel Farage has told the Sunday Telegraph he's in talks with another Conservative MP to defect to UKIP. Any idea who that is? I've no idea who that is. My really? focus is on getting the voters to move over and to stay with, with, with UKIP. We've got an Australian style useful, point though, space it, system on point, immigration. To keep I the think, momentum going, it'd be useful to have another defection. I mean, I think you know, I'm the best bet to, to, to beat Labour in Rochester and Street. <laughs> and I'm, it's <laughs> only you. UKIP who are going to control it. immigration and deal with that issue. Craig McKinley, Nishaba Khan. Bye-bye.